Hello there, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you? If you're joining live, go ahead and say hello. Thank you for tuning in to Healers and Healing. I'm glad you're here. We are, if you're just joining, um, Bridget Murphy. If we haven't met yet, it's good to know a little bit about what we're doing. I am a shamanic practitioner and a mentor, and I help other healers to align with their fire so that they can take their work in the world because we really need all hands on deck right now and we need to move into the yes and out of the no or out of the resistance that we have and so that's why I'm here. I created this healers and healing series to support healers, helpers, healing arts practitioners who are actively in service with their gifts. And so I offer in-depth sacred mentor programs. I offer live intensives and online training. And next week I'm going to be opening up a healers collective, which I can tell you more about after today's segment. Hey there, everyone. Glad you're joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a part two in a three-part series that is about amplifying your ability to hold space. <clears throat> Yesterday, I covered establishing the container. There's a recording in here if you want to check it out. Today, I want to talk about creating protocols for holding space. Holding space is... Um, something you hear people talk about all the time, but what does that really mean? And um, I'm going to go into some specific examples around what, about, about some specific examples around protocols that you can create for yourself for holding space. All healing work and all healing process happens within a container. I talked about the container yesterday. <clears throat> and as healing work happens, we have to have protocols for ourselves, protocols and things that we have in place as part of our container that help us to hold a solid space. And it also helps the people that we're working with, whether they are clients, friends, whoever it is that we're holding a healing space for. When you have your space, when you understand the space that you're holding, you can convey that more easily to other people. And people can feel that. And the only way to develop your own style of holding space is to do it. And one of the things that's helpful is understanding what it means to hold space and what are some protocols that you can put in place to help yourself. This for me developed over time. And um, I remember when I first started offering healing work to the world, I've been doing healing work for a very long time. And when I very first started to professionally offer healing work to the world, I had to create my own path. Nobody taught me how to do it. Nobody was giving me tips in some free group on Facebook. <laughs> I don't think there was a free group on Facebook. And so I bring probably 10 to 20 years of my experience in working with other people into these segments. So they're usually loaded and I like to keep them action packed, giving you direct actions and ideas that you can put right into place. With the healers and healing segment, I also like to keep it to about 20 minutes because it's easier to digest that way. So yesterday in the Amplifying Your Ability to Hold Space series, we talked about establishing the container. Today, we're going to talk about creating protocols for space holding. Everything is easier when we have a process. Everything is easier when we have a process, and everything is easier when we understand our process. The process change and expand, changes and expands over time, and that's fine. I, there's nothing in healing work that's like static and always the same. Things are fluid. They move. And I'm going to offer you a couple of pieces to incorporate into your process. 
whether you're brand new at taking your work into the world or you've been doing it for 10, 15 years, there will be something in this series for you. So thanks for tuning in. If you have questions, you can put them in the comments bar and I will answer them at the end. So to all healing work that you offer to someone, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Now we understand that healing itself is ongoing. It's cyclical. It spirals. When I'm not talking about the healing process itself. I'm talking about the healing work that you do physically with people in the container that we talked about yesterday that you've already established. Okay, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And paying attention to the need for that as you work with someone is going to help you be more solid in what you're offering. And it's also going to allow people to feel like they understand what you're doing. Now, when you're actually doing the things that you do and you might not have words for it and, you know, it, it isn't always explainable. All of that can still take place within the context of having a beginning and a middle and an end. You can have the most profound experiences. A person can have the most profound experiences when they're in a healing session. And those experiences are going to be better integrated and more understood if the person who is facilitating, who's conduiting that healing process has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so um, we'll start at the beginning, right? Having a pre and a, a pre and a post process for a healing session is beneficial for both the people that you're working with and for yourself. And so having a, what a, a process for yourself, something that you do each time you do healing work with somebody, something you do before and after. So that you personally have an open and a close to that session. For me, um, I offer a personal gratitude. And I offer gratitude for the healing work that's about to happen. I do that before anyone even comes into my healing studio or if I'm doing online work. Before they even come to me, I offer personal gratitude before the session. And I offer gratitude after the session. I'm just going to back up a minute because there's a part of this beginning, middle, and the end that goes a lot better if you back up into the bigger picture and establish your container in general. I talked about that yesterday, having a space set up, having yourself set up all the time so that you're not having to reinvent the wheel or do some huge big grounding ritual before you do healing work with people. So refer back to that if, if you want more information on that. So your pre-process, um, having a personal gratitude is what I do. I have a personal gratitude for the healing work that's about to happen. I do that before and after. That's what I do for me, right? What I do for my clients and what you can do for your clients is let them know ahead of time how you work. Talk to them before the healing session and explain to them, this is what I, this is what you can expect. Our session will be approximately an hour and a half. This is what the investment is for it. And this is what we'll do. For me, one particular type of session I do is they come in live or online. We chat for about 10 minutes and then we do a healing treatment. And then we chat for about 10, 15 minutes and, and they integrate it and then they're out the door. So that's a simple thing that I can explain before they come to me. Okay, Jilly, whoever you are, <laughs> this is what it looks like. This is what it will look like. This is what you can expect. That lets Jilly or who any, anybody else know that they are stepping into a container that's well held. There's no like, well, it'll be as long as it is because ain't nobody got time for that. And 
it also is important that you can let people know how, you know, what, how to plan for their day and their time. And if there's going to be, if you do some type of healing work that takes hours and hours, you need to let people know that you need to set that up. I also, when I'm doing shamanic healing sessions, make sure I have people leave time afterwards to integrate, but that's another conversation. You would make your pre-process where you're talking to people about what to expect. You would make that, you would align that with what it is that you do, right? Um, so that's your, your pre-process. You talk to them, you tell them what to expect. When they get there, which I'll talk about in a minute. You do your thing, you do your healing work, and then they leave or the healing session is over. After that, post healing session, follow up with them. That's my suggestion that you follow up with them. You may already have an ongoing relationship with the person you're working with and that, you know, may already exist or not. It's really helpful for people to hear from you and for you to touch base and see how they're integrating. And it also lets them know that you're available for questions that come up. People are much more likely to integrate the work and understand what's happening if they know you're available to talk to them about what they're experiencing. So that's the first piece, right? The first piece of creating a protocol is to have a pre and a post process, both for them and for you. And then my best advice is to practice, practice, practice. Keep practicing working with others and practicing what you do so that you can know your own flow. All right, that's the first piece. Hello who's, to anyone who's just joining us. Go ahead and say hello. Let us know you're here. This is uh, part two in the series of amplifying your ability to hold a healing space. Today we're talking about creating protocols for holding space. Okay, so pre and post process is the first thing. The second thing is, do not make it about you. Do not make the session about you. Don't make the session be a dissertation on healing. If they're coming for a healing experience, you need to allow them to have that experience. And that doesn't happen when you do the majority of the talking. So have questions that you ask and um, have your protocol process that you follow and then let the person have their experience and let them come to their own conclusion. Sometimes I find that we are, and this can come from nervousness or anxiety. It can also come from not really understanding what your role is as a healer. We over explain and try to rationalize and sort of mentalize, I just made that word up, healing. And um, that isn't necessary. It's not necessary. What is necessary is, is that a person has their own experience. So let them have their own experience. Let them come to their own conclusions. And don't try to figure out all of the meanings for their pain. Let me say that louder. Don't try to figure out all of the meanings for their pain. That's not the healer's role. A healer's role is to alleviate suffering. A healer's role is to alleviate suffering. And psychoanalyzing someone's pain is not the same thing as alleviating suffering. So keep that in mind. A person is coming for healing. And healing is not a reading. Coming for a healing session does not mean that you're giving people a reading, unless that is what you do, unless you are giving them a reading as part of a session. But when someone comes for a healing treatment, their whole being is having that experience. The more you talk, the less connected they are to their own self and their own soul. A healing session is an opportunity for someone to communicate with their own soul. And if you're talking the whole time, it's not so likely that's going to happen. So leave room for them to have their own experience. That's the second, that's the second part around creating a, 
protocol for space holding. And I could say more about that at another point in time. Um, I'll stop there. Third piece in creating in this in this in creating of protocols is to educate yourself to educate yourself and receive mentorship on a regular basis. If you're holding space for other people, you need to have space held for you. If you're holding space for people, you're not, unless you are a psychotherapist, you're not a psychotherapist. Healing, healing arts practitioners are not therapists. So your job is not to psychoanalyze, but your job is to learn about trauma and its effects. Because even though you're not tr treating, you're not professionally, psychologically treating people's trauma, they're going to show up with it. They're going to present with it. And you need to kind of understand what that can look like when people show up at your door. When you have an understanding of what to expect about how someone might show up vulnerable into a container, then you can know how to hold it. You can know how to refer when you need to refer out. You can know how to recognize when someone is triggered and is related to trauma. You don't need to fix it or change it. And if you understand what that looks like, you can hold a more solid space. So learn about trauma and its effects on someone. Learn about how someone, some of the signs that someone has experienced trauma. And ultimately, it's good to have conversations with people and know people a little bit more before you do healing work with them. Because if someone has a fresh trauma or a recent trauma and you don't know about it, they can show up in a very different way than they would be showing up with an old trauma. Either way, you're not a trauma specialist unless you are. <laughs> it's important to, it's important to understand that. So learn about trauma and if someone is coming to you with a particular ailment, whether it's mental or emotional or physical, wh whatever that ailment is, research their ailment ahead of time so that you have an understanding of how it might be affecting them, what could be causing it, and just to get an idea of what the pain level they might be dealing with. Again, you're not a doctor. You're a healing arts practitioner. It's not your job to be a doctor. And the more educated you are, the more it'll help a person to feel comfortable because when they share whatever it is they're going, they have going on, whatever their predicament or diagnosis is, you don't need to be shocked or wondering or doing your own process work around it because you've done a little research ahead of time. You're in the know. When you're in the know and you're educated about things, you can hold a more solid space. So those are a few protocols for helping you or for amplifying your ability to hold space. Checking my scroll here. So I'll just do a recap here. The first protocol is to have a pre and a post process both for yourself and the person you're working with. Second protocol is to not make it about you. Have questions that you ask and let a person have their own experience. Don't overinterpret it or try to figure out their pain. That's not your job. The healer's job is to alleviate pain, not psychoanalyze it. And the third one is to educate yourself around trauma Educate yourself around what a person might be experiencing before they come into your container, before they come for a healing session, and receive mentorship on a regular basis. That's going to be helpful. So that is, those are three protocols that you can put in place for yourself that are going to help you to hold a more solid space. I'm open to hearing your comments or questions, and I'll wait because I know there's a 20-second um, lag. So... Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of healing. Not tomorrow, Friday. <laughs> this series is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. In my mind, it's tomorrow. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the fundamentals of healing. And what, and, and there's all, it's not what you think it is. We'll just leave it at that. So 
Um, I'm reading the comments. You're welcome, Jessica. Thanks for hopping in. It's always fun. A little burst of light when you hop in. So yeah, so this is a three-part series. This is part two. Part one of the recording is in here. This recording will be in here. Part three will happen on Friday, and that'll be at the fundamentals of healing. I am next week going to open up the Healers Collective. And what that is, is um, a collective of healers who are ready to establish a practice and or expand the practice they already have established to reach more people in the world. It'll be a step-by-step, -step, it'll be a step, a, a group, a collective that has step-by-step -step instructions and training on how to talk about your work, how to establish the values from where you spring, the values for, that you have in your, in your work, in your business, and how to um, set up a whole bunch of protocols to ensure that you're a solid container and that you can solidly speak about and represent the work that you do. So, um, and all of that will happen in a container that I'm creating for healers who are really ready to activate because that's who I'm here for. So I can tell you more about that. I'll share more about that on Friday. If you feel inspired and know you're ready to join Healers Collective, you can type into the chat or message me and I'll make sure that I add you to the list to get more information because it will be a limited group of people. So anything else that y'all have, any questions, any protocols you're gonna put in place for yourself, I'd love to hear it in the comments. I've managed to keep this 22 minutes. Good job. That was my goal, 20 minutes. Have you um, hop in, receive some information, and hop out. All right. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I'll be back in Friday, 1230 p.m. Eastern time, same time. We're going to talk about the fundamentals of healing. If you're interested in the Healers Collective that's opening next week, Ping me by writing Healers Collective in the comments or message me and I'll make sure that I connect with you. All right, I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye for now.